welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain. Yo, we got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please, uh, send in a question. Come and get some answers. Learn a couple lessons from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax. Cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts. And allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the Nerdiverse. Welcome to the Masters of the Nerdiverse podcast, where we always have such sites to show you. This uh, convalescent android of a podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and Spotify. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G. And with me today is my also host, the um, Bammy to Jammy Lee from Double Dragon, Winter Trash Monk the Thizzard. Oh, what's up, everybody? This is Trash Monk the Third, Trash Monk I, I, I. That's Trash Monk I. Uh huh. And I'm coming at you from the trash bunker, eating some chicken and wild rice soup that I paid three ninety nine for, and I'm pretty sure it's from a can. Nice. Back to you, Mike. <laughs> yeah. You know the canned meats are the most powerful because all the juices are just yeah. congealed so inside. I, <laughs> I bought it from the deli at my local grocery store. Yeah. And for some reason, my eye got touched like, soup? You mean I could get a bucket of soup and go to go home with it? No. Yeah, think about it like this, man. If you put like a whole chicken in like a Ziploc bag and just and just pressurize it for like a month, that's, uh-huh. the, that's the most flavorful chicken you'll ever eat, dog. Whatever, man. <laughs> Do it. And in the, in, the, in the shadows, we have a special guest on this week's episode. We have the... Uh, the Twitter tyrant himself, um, Ozzy Austin, man. What you doing, dude? Welcome. Oh, shit. To the dark side. Oh, no. The darkness There's... has come. The darkness. The, but, the... oh, gosh. OG, oh, will occurs. Let's have a good time, y'all. Let's have a good kosher time. Oh, no. Kosher. Oh, he does me. voices. Oh, no. He's going to hit us with them, with them voice talents. Can you do Jeff Bridges? Do Jeff Bridges. Oh, yeah. That's good enough. <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. Okay, now do it, Jeff Goldblum. Do it. Oh, so you see, I'm just like just so very sexy, and I was in Jurassic Park. He was in Jurassic Park. Yes, he does say that a lot. He yeah. says he it does all say the that time. quite a bit. He says it to whoever will listen. Uh, so normally when he's opening up his falafel restaurant or ooh. truck store. If, you, if, you didn't see it, but I also did like the really crazy hand gestures. Where it looks oh, like yeah. he's trying to massage the air between people. I call that the Nicolas Cage. You know what I'm saying? When you talk with your hands. No, you call it the Nicolas Cage when you buy a pyramid in New Orleans. Dude, that, isn't that the dream, though? <laughs> I would super buy a pyramid in Inglewood and dare people to say anything to me. Like, <laughs> just, just put it in the middle <laughs> of Los Angeles so you can see it from space. It's my money. <laughs> Don't tell me anything. Oh, man. I would pay to see Nicolas Cage just riding a pyramid down the middle of the streets. I just want to see him slide down it like freaking like Assassin's Creed to his car or something. Well, if, considering what he looks like now, he'd probably just face plant real hard and just leave a bloody smear. Yeah, man. He's literally Mumra, Doug. He became Mumra. Uh, <laughs> out of control. Out of control. So, <laughs> so normally we would do a normal week episode where we go through our weeks and talk about the news, but nah. We're not doing that this, today, because you know what this week is, right? It's Star Trek, Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars. <laughs> Can we just end the podcast now? Because we just face planet. space. I mean, I have the winter's final force here. I have winter's address. I can go find him. No, you, <laughs> well, <laughs> you're supposed to send me like goodies, or I don't know. I think mm-hmm. Winter has like a Jamie Lee Curtis Halloween level traps at his house. So anybody who just comes through, best, better be prepared because they're going to fall through a trap door or something. <laughs> Winter's off in the background taking rifle competitions, yeah, just man. leveling a pump act, just doing a lever action rifle, dead to aim, boom, 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 boom. Winter can assemble and disassemble a Kalashnikov blindfolded in under 35 seconds. He... That's the lore I'm building right now. Those are words that he said, folks. Oh, man, I've seen him do it. We're talking about Star Wars, guys. We're hijacking this week's show. 
And we're just going to talk about Star Wars. This is the Star Wars cast. Apropos of nothing. I guess the movie's coming out this week, oh. this month. <laughs> this month. I guess this year, they're, you know, because they're annual now. And we're just going to talk, we're three guys, we're just going to talk about Star Wars at nauseum until we all go to sleep. So, my first question, and it's going to be a yin-yang kind of question. So, I'm, I'm going to post this first to Austin. Mm-hmm. What is the best thing about Star Wars? What is the worst thing about Star Wars? Go. The best thing about Star Wars is the inherent sense of hope and goodness that can come from the smallest, most insignificant person in existence that can lead to change lives, destinies, and entire galaxies. Like the Metachlorians. The worst thing about Star Wars <laughs> is the fact that George Lucas wanted to make a mini-universe focused around Metachlorians and their daily lives because apparently they're sentient beings. You do know this Metachlorian. Jerry Seinfeld is a Metachlorian. What's the deal with all these Jedi strikes? Man, <laughs> Rob Schneider is They don't the strike, they fly. It should be Jedi flies. Je- there are Jedi flies. It's kind of like the Green Lantern Corps. Acknowledge the, je- acknowledge the voice. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you see, now that um, Austin's here, he's our joke, joke, our joke lord. He's our I'm the joke lord. lord. He's the joke lord now. <laughs> yeah. So all jokes have to be passed through him for inspection, Doug. I am the one who does all the approvals, and you are denied. Uh, you are denied. Come back one year. Star Wars, man. It's There's certain things in life that you just can't avoid, like breathing. Maybe falling is one of them. I think every human has fallen at least once <laughs> in life. Yeah. You know, uh, um, dreams, maybe. people. Everyone on Earth has dreamed at least once. And I think that Star Wars is one of those things that you just can't avoid. No matter how, how where you are in the world, you're gonna just be digging through like your your Amazon rainforest water. Now you're gonna I just see a flyer, three, Boba Fett, or something. I bet know? three people that have not seen any Star Wars movies in the last, but year. but they've seen all they like, the advertisements or yeah, yeah, they've seen the advertisements. But they, they know, oh, Space Wizards, they have uh, gigantic lightsabers or yeah. something. Darth Vader is probably one of the most well-known silhouettes in right, in human right. History. But they've never sat down to watch a full movie. That's not the same thing. They 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 have to acknowledge his existence. Not yeah, like it, it has broken into the ether, man. Of That's what the I'm saying. Culture. It's, part, it's, part it's of, a it's a it's a zeitgeist. It's a cultural awareness. <laughs> it's cultural awareness. It's the Mandela effect made you flesh. Over there. <laughs> yeah, Excuse man. me, I have a college meja meja mega vacation. I am sm- yeah. I am smart S A R T, oh I mean S M A R T, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so Star Wars, man. <laughs> to, to to understand the, the the future, let's go to the past, man. So, uh, the movie debuts. A young whippersnapper, George Lucas, has nothing but spit in his mouth and a and a star in his I eye. I just finished American Graffiti. American man. Graffiti. Was so I good, love guys. Modesto. I love Modesto <laughs> so much. I love you. I love you, and I'm George up, Lucas, and I love sand. I love sand. They can just play together. Um, so Star Wars comes. <laughs> I force you to get me. Oh, I, I was going to steal a joke. Never mind. That's okay. Just, steal yeah. it. Steal it. No, Mike later. referenced a better joke. You I already know what I'm talking you, about, yeah. right? You will get me a Diet Pepsi. <laughs> it's a, it's an SNL. Uh, but but George, they're they're separated by two thousand years. They're just play. <laughs> He's like, I can't with you, George. So Star Wars comes out and just blows everyone's ass open with 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 the uh, sci fi fantasy forever, right? Mm-hmm. And the world's never quite the same after that. It's just this big tidal wave of science fiction just adventuring. Until until today, and this was wait what forty years ago at this point, um, a series that spanned it generations, good or bad, right? Can you imagine <laughs> growing up during like the prequel series? But, I grew up during the prequel series. Yeah, it's it's kind of ready, right? And it's like, so, yeah. So Mike, I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt your diatribe real quick. Yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. So at course, this point, then I have to ask the both of you: What is the best out of the original trilogy, episodes four, five, six? It's Empire, dude. Yeah, Empire Strikes Back it's is Empire, the man. is the dope. It's okay. The best. So, it's the I best can continue Star Wars associating ever. with you. Yeah, there's no. That is the right yeah. answer, man. I mean, I really like Return of the Jedi. <laughs> I, I mean, there are those Return of the Jedi defenders, yeah. and I'm not. There are some dope parts in 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 Return. 
other than the fact they killed Bubble off, they, ki- they killed Bubble Fett off in a comedic fashion, which I'm not a fan of. <laughs> yeah, uh, Return is just it's man, rough. it's a little rough. And then Leia, <laughs> but that was the birth of the corruption of the series, right? That's where money. That's where I wouldn't money say that. Set. I would no, say the corruption has say, always been there. <laughs> no, I would say that. A New Hope and Empire are still movies, right? They're not. They're still movies that try to tell a story. <laughs> okay. But once you start going into Return, they start realizing that these characters make money. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it's at Return that the series just kind of went to a, eh, it's okay. We'll just have like a really nice little soft clap. And People then love teddy bears, man. I know, but, but guess what? Bears. The series started dying for me at least in Episode One. When, oh, you know, it's Liam Neeson. He's running around. He's a really cool Jedi. Oh, he's going to swing the Force. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's midichlorians in but, your in your system. It's like, but, oh, okay. This system just, wow. And, system of a down. I'm about to die. <laughs> I'm seeing, I can smell peanut butter. Uh, but you can't <laughs> deny the hype of episode one, though. The Earth was on fire when yeah, the I remember. was coming out. Yeah. It was in sane dude wasn't there like mountain dew had like different uh the characters Marketing red yeah. they had red mountain dew red yeah. mountain, they had sith mountain darth maul mountain dew and yes. stupid stuff like that god darth maul jesus christ what a wasted character man and they tried running him back so hard in the, in well, the cartoon they made him a thing in the clone wars and yeah. then in rebels that's what I'm saying. They tried to run that back. It's like, oh man, we killed Gwen. We killed Gwen. Stacy. And and the solo movie. Don't forget the solo movie. Oh Jesus! Don't <laughs> talk about that. But we have to because this is the Star Wars cast. But I mean, the <laughs> potential of Episode One, and I love that now in modern Star Wars, they're paying homage to ep- the the prequels in a respective manner. Yeah, you know what I mean. They're they're making them kind of cool again. Not that they were ever cool. Even though I will defend Revenge of the Revenge of the Sith all day long, I think yeah. that's, a, that's the best of the of the prequels. Well, you're talking. Well, I enjoy the entire Star Wars series. <laughs> no, uh-uh. no, you don't. No, you don't. No, man. no, you don't. <laughs> Winter, <laughs> sit down. Nobody does. Sit uh... down. Da- sit down. Right. God, I this. enjoy it. <laughs> I'll sit down, young man. Young man. It young man. Crazy. Sit down and listen to me as I <laughs> spell the gospel for you. Okay. This reminds me of when I went to go see Spider Man three with my buddy, yeah. and we watched through the whole movie. And I was so, I, I was so like un- un- enamored with it's Spider Man. My buddy was like, "That movie sucked." I was like, "No, nah, man, it was awesome." Did you see Venom? No, it sucked, Mike. You need to understand. Uh... It sucked. And I was so glazed over by the by the the spectacle that I went home and thought about. It. I was like, "That was a bad movie." And I think I did that with. All of the Star Wars prequels, and I did that with Man of Steel. Yeah, Man of Steel. Like, I did that with Superman Returns. I, I thought it was awesome, and my buddy was like, "That sucked, dude." (laughs) Well, but but back to the point, Winter. You're wrong. You're wrong. You were very wrong. Well, you never asked me what I enjoy about the series and what I least what I don't like about it. You enjoyed it, therefore you were wrong. (laughs) Star Wars fans can't be happy, don't you understand? True Star Wars fans. They, you can't have a female lead. That is wrong. It's like it's like breathing in air and ex, ex, exiling, you know, so, you know, carbon monoxide, dude. Yeah. You can't drive a ship through another ship at warp speed. That is wrong. That is it's cool, <laughs> but it's wrong. And that God, kind of, Star Wars fans are the worst. Uh, they and and that kind of leads me to another question. I think folks will. There's some group group uh, folks that agree with me out there of course there are there okay are. okay yeah there are good there stuff are. in those series yes yeah that's why I, you haven't you still haven't asked me what i think is, what, what i like most is, about this. what, what you is like your wrongful series? assumption of what is <laughs> wow. okay i think um a big part of this series is the idea of repetitive cycles in the mythos uh, that's, your, in, that's what you like yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you like that essentially because no one's willing to really change much. It just goes through a never-ending loop, essentially. A loop of N- content. Not really. I. <laughs> I mean, not not from like a creative standpoint. I go, but I go it, into my mind of like, okay, let we all know about Joseph Campbell, the heroes of a thousand faces, and I go, how did George Lucas put that in to the first movie, and then how do we see that progress in the original trilogy? then how do we see that progress in the prequel? And then how do we see that in the sequel series? 
where now we see there's a, a bend in the cycle to where uh, the, <laughs> we see people trying to break away from that cycle and, and getting, make a new one. Yeah. You, and, you saw see, what happened that, with that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Fans see, I think the there, there is merit ever. to that. Yeah. I, I agree with Winter. There is merit to that. That's like one of the few things good about the <laughs> the, the prequel trilogy, I should say then. Yeah. Is that there is oh they're trying to change things they're trying to adapt but it they, everyone just gets dragged down to the bottom no matter what yeah because Star Wars fans don't want change no no it's not the fans it's like the people in the universe like Whoa. the entire Jedi Order and everything else like oh they try to change things but nope they screwed up again well it's like Winter was saying it's very cyclical back yeah. from the Trade Federation all the way to the First Order and that's what I like about it. But what I don't like about it is that there's people's different definitions of what that cycle should be throughout the entirety of the uh, of the series. Of the series where there's, and it's like George Lucas from the original trilogy is different from George Lucas from the prequel. He's a different man, dude. Mm. Yeah. The yeah. same person who wrote The Shining didn't write Dr. Sleep. Yeah. You know, That's very true. So that adjustment <laughs> alone changes the, the view of the entire – series because right all right quick hot take hot take yep in the new trilogy who is better jj abrams or rian johnson i prefer rian johnson but i am crazy and i've been told i'm wrong oh man i so i liked rian johnson's uh star wars i think i think he has exactly what i'm thinking about where he he went so against what the cycle is supposed to be in my mind that people got pissed off. <laughs> yeah, because I like, agree. It's, I it's definitely not, agree. Yeah, it's like it's not ex- not what you were expecting, but that's what the character of Ray has, where she is an anomaly in the mythos of the Skywalker saga. So I a hundred percent back that. Yeah, the only reason that Ray is like so interesting is because she's not supposed to be a Skywalker. She's supposed to be a random person who mm-hmm. breaks everything down but, and lets the universe take a collective sigh of relief right. from this freaking, what, like 70-plus year family drama bullcrap? <laughs> but the, right. thing, the thing about Ray and what makes her so compelling is that she is just Luke. Because before Luke jumped on the scene, there wasn't Skywalker or anything. There was just Darth Vader... The, their their Jedi were extinct at that point. Mm-hmm. Sith were technically extinct other, outside of Darth, but they weren't even calling each, each other Sith. The name Sith does not show up in the first three movies. So Luke is kind of dropped into the middle of this of of this uh, I would say conflict between yeah. the rebels in in the Empire, just like Rey is dropped in the center of this conflict between um, the Resistance and the First Order. I mean, the, the analogies are pretty spot on. Ray is Luke, Finn is Han, but there is no Princess Leia. So, no. that's but what is Finn is Leia. Finn is Who Leia. Poe po is Han. Huh? You think so? Finn is Leia because because Ray and Finn have been t- attached to the hip throughout the entire series, and also there is hints that Finn is a force is force sensitive in a way. So he's more akin to hit to Leia. Than Poe Dameron, who has no connection to the Force, he really has no connection to any of the space wizardry. He's just a good ass pilot who has a QBB. I can see that. Actually, I can see that quite easily. You know what I mean? And I think Ray. I think the. And you asked the question, who is better, Ryan Johnson or J.J. Um, Abrams? And I think they're both problematic in di- very different ways. They're almost opposite sides of a spectrum. <laughs> where my big deal is like J.J. Abrams. His 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 movie episode seven was so very much a rehash of yeah. episode four. It's nothing challenging. It's nothing new. Nope. You have the mentor figure who dies. Yep. There's literally just a Death Star again. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's some new Jedi who's being trained up. Yep. There's just so many symbolisms and analogies. That are basically ripoffs straight from episode four. Yeah, but I think that's done on purpose. Yes, it is. It's supposed to be nostalgic, and that's really, really boring. But that's a very... not nostalgic. It's supposed to show like the cyclical nature. No, of, it's look. nostalgia, bro. 
<laughs> okay. okay. I will say that. Winter does have a good point. His 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 um <laughs> theorem about cyclical natures and ever never ending repeats. Yeah. Behind or him. it never changes. And in the you know where that's from, Winter. Uh Battlefield One. <laughs> Which Am I right? I don't know where that's from. <laughs> war. War never changes. No, man. It's it's the two... and the, the, You know, just to use Star Wars as an analogy, there needs to be a balance in the Force. You can't have someone who's all pure nostalgia and there's no meat to what they're talking about versus someone who completely abandons nostalgia and wants to kind of set a new course for the series. Fans backlashed both sides of that. People didn't like The Force Awakens because it was too much like A New Hope. But then you yeah, have but The Last I, Jedi. Okay. People hate it because it wasn't Star Wars. Oh, I love The Last Jedi more yeah, than too. anything else. But we can't, I, I can't it. necessarily go by what all the fans say because they inherently have like a – like a. a I don't want to get the backlash. Star Wars fans don't know – no, don't can't feel joy or the spray of the sea. Oh, can't Star Wars feel- fans don't know how to make a movie. No. Well, it, I don't. But they know what I, they want, though. It's it's the idea <laughs> of uh, what what do I? Want? Star Wars fans super know what they want. They uh, but they don't know how to. They don't know what receptacle to put those emotions in. Right. That, this is why Star Wars can can can't change anymore. But I used to feel that way. I, I the 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 backlash of the Last Jedi filled me with so much dread about the future of Star Wars <laughs> that I just didn't care anymore. Like fans have ruined it. Fans of have have spit so much vitriol at this series that there's no rep- re- no rep- re- repairing it. But then the Mandalorian came along and showed me what Star Wars could be. Yeah, and I'm like, my my faith is restored. This is a direction that the universe could go. That's that's just so understated and so skillfully written that I'm actually have some hope for the future. Well, there's other examples of good writing besides just the movies, though. If you take, for example, well, the BioWare's stuff. entire series of Knights of the Old Republic, ah. one and two for the original RPG games, and yeah. then their MMO, yeah. which the MMO is like a weird state of canon, not canon, yeah. constantly. So it's very, very confusing, but there are good storylines there. Dude. I would say that out of <laughs> most Western MMOs, Night Solar Republic has some of the best writing available. The 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 dynamic between Sith and Knights of the Old Republic 2 is the best depiction of their conflict in any form of of of, of media too. Right. The, 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 that that kind of threesome between the the Sith and their kind of I, dynamic and ideologies and the you know it's just brilliant writing that it's that the studios would never allow to be on screen because it's just that's too... because Disney <laughs> is afraid of taking chances. And as we it... saw when they released that Black Widow trailer today, don't get me started on that. Uh, oh, Jesus, do not I... mention its name. Don't Star, mention Wars. Its name. Star Wars, Star, Star Wars. Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. So, you, you, you mentioned like outside of the film and kind of the influences this had on comics. The inf- there's some really, there's a really good Darth Vader Didn't book. Didn't they out reboot there right now. the Star Wars comic? Yeah, Mar- they did for Marvel. For Marvel, recently. yeah. Okay. And there's a, there's an entire Darth Vader run that's amazing. Super good, dude. It's super good, wow. man. It's like there's a, there's a specific a, scene I see where like there's an entire like division of, of yeah. Republic troopers surrounding Vader, saying they have him surrounded, no. and he, all he says is, "All I see are dead men." No, they, no, he's surrounded by the division. They say, "Don't move. You're surrounded." He says, "All I'm surrounded by is fear and death." Okay, men. that's what it is. And he just he just force wipes the entire. And if you've kind of seen, I kind of cheated and saw the ending of the Fallen Fallen Order Star Wars. Same. And <laughs> <laughs> just because I needed, I didn't want you know. Yeah, I'm not going to play the game. And I am talk- saving myself like I saved myself from marriage. Nice, aren't you so chaste? <laughs> just like the Star Wars. Madonna song about this. <laughs> like a prayer. Uh, oh God, and- there is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Darth Vader for a second. Let's talk about the rise and fall of Anakin Skywalker yes. and what story that tells and how all this new trilogy is is just kind of an epilogue of that backlash, right? <laughs> it's not anything new. It's just an epilogue. <laughs> Darth of, Vader of is the a, fall of Darth uh, Vader. The original neckbeard. Is. This is what happens <laughs> when you don't hold on to abstinence. <laughs> Sorry, no, he's the original incel. 
<laughs> the, the most original of incel. incel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if there was so mad, if there was Reddit in the in the Star Wars universe, oh please, incels existed before Reddit, Winter, in a galaxy far, far away. (laughs) But I will say, don't call me out, Austin. (laughs) Damn it! it. I mean, like, think about it. He's he's an incel. Like, he's just so mad that he can't be with a woman, and when he finally does it, he gets really angry and snaps her fucking neck. Here's the thing. Oh gosh, I just Skywalker. <laughs> Sorry, it just slipped out. <laughs> you, you got my weird Star Wars. The Return dark side the is Jedi strong creature. in this one. <laughs> the dark side <laughs> is strong in you. No, it's just Anakin Skywalker has always had anger issues, man. <laughs> oh my he's god, had, he's he's he such a child. Issues. Yeah, he, and that's the thing. The Darth Vader was up until the moment of his catharsis. He was a child. <laughs> yeah, that's the funniest thing. Like his coming moment, of age. Was, was him losing everything. Was him losing right. everything by his own hand. Not hands, because he lost one. <laughs> but I like, I like the message, though, in Phantom Menace that shows, like, Qui-Gon Jinn, Qui-Gon Jinn, Qui-Gon is, looks, see, sees his, like, metachlorian count is through the roof, but after being interviewed by the council, uh, he, they go, we will not train the boy. No, nah, man, because there's rules And then Qui-Gon this, goes, I'll train him myself. I'm going to train him anyway. Yeah. And thus so already, started, and you, sh- you saw that there was an issue with that. Like, two apprentices? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's stupid because he so broke the Qui-Gon rules. So Qui-Gon is man. bending the rules to fit, like, I have a feeling that this kid has some, some potential. So already they're breaking the path away from the Jedi style. True, but you could also say that the entire time, Qui-Gon Jinn was a renowned gray Jedi. He was a lot of, well, I mean, Jedi have some things, right? But they have a lot of other things they don't do. He was a Jedi renegade. He didn't didn't necessarily follow their rules exactly, which led to the fall of Jedis for, what, 50, 60 years? It's it's Qui-Gon's fault, guys. And the thing is, it's like, man, this kid is jumping through the roof, man. Look at this kid. He's amazing. We're going to draft him. He's 10. Mm -hmm. This is the NBA. You can't draft him. Well, I'm, I'm going to draft him anyway. <laughs> and, then, and then he's on the Lakers. I don't get this analogy. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's a sports analogy. But uh, Put it into hockey sense. Like, talk about the game that happens. He has a mean He shoots from one nut to the other in, in like, far. a second. He's like Happy Gilmore where he can just, put, he can just uh, hit the ball for over 700 yards. But yeah. Qui-Gon's failure was, being so, was, his, was his own hubris. I can train the kid. <laughs> Oh, Even though I'm still boy. trading Obi Wan. I could. St- this kid is so hype that somewhere I found this diamond in the rough, right? This, and, yeah. and no one's going to tell me no because because Obi Wan was already on his way out. He was about to Padawan out. Like, you know, could, it's crazy. This this makes me just like think back to the Clone Wars and how good that is as a medium. Because guess what? We see stuff where they try to advance that plot. Yep. Like Anakin is a child. How do you make a child into a man? You give him another child to train and try to become a, a person. You, Let's give him a Sokotano. A Sokotano is the most unsung, weirdest character of, in the entire series, man. She is just, she is so, such a sore thumb, but then becomes the best ever. She has the best, like, redemption arc as a character in the series. Because it's like, the, the most petulant Jedi is training a petulant Jedi. You know, it's and it, it's and, quite amazing. It's quite amazing. And her arc and how that shifts is something that she's one of those characters that just has to show up on screen because she's so popular at mm-hmm. some point. Oh, technically, she is still that. floating around the canon somewhere. somewhere I and love that. He's going to show up <laughs> somewhere, dude. Especially with whatever they do in the future. But the, with Darth Vader, I was wanted to kind of stick to Anakin for a little bit. Is that what was the what was the the point of his downfall? Was it was it pod racing? Was it when he slayed that entire <laughs> village of Tuscan Raiders? I think if you're going to be serious, it's going to be seeing him and his mother being subjected to slavery so easily yeah. within the Republic, for, like for being subjected to slavery so offhandedly that nobody does a thing about it. If you think about it, he's just Magneto. <laughs> he had to he had to he had to you know suffer through the tyranny. Of an empire that kept him in, in chains all his young life 
the moment he finds freedom, he doesn't know what to do with it. He can't Yo, mentally handle but it. But guess what? When Magneto had kids, he nothing happened to him. He was just like, cool, I'm strong. When Anakin had kids, he's like, whoops, I'm dead. Well, Anakin was stupid because he didn't have the high ground. If he had the high ground, the Star Wars would be oh, very different. Get off of here with your memes, Mike. Uh, I'm just saying. Get off of here with your he memes. Should... Get. My favorite get Jedi in the series is Obi Wan Kenobi because he because he's the most competent Jedi of the entire series. Mike, get off the pedestal. You're done. Yeah, You're done saying, here. Really? He is the most competent. <laughs> No, Jedi. no. Winter, bring something else into this topic round. Go. What? Uh, yeah. Wait, find the I, lie. I, <laughs> I'm trying to like think about like what the different characters represent. Where yeah, you know, it's like um, Yoda's a boomer. Yoda, Yoda is, is a, boomer. a boomer, and and baby Yoda says boomer. Okay. Um, <laughs> let, let's talk about Han Solo for a second, man. Let's talk about yeah. Harrison Ford, Doug. Yeah, is I, Han Solo supposed to be the character we, we relate to the most? In... No, it's it's Luke. It was always it's Luke. Luke, Luke, Luke is, is a no name nobody who gets himself up to aspirations and ideals. So we can relate to someone that has force. No, we can relate to someone who doesn't know what they're doing. Okay. Winter in real life, the force is love. Oh, shut up. Let's go back to Obi Wan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the, the, the force is, force is love. Oh, jeez. Oh, but what baby. is love? Baby, don't hurt Ain't me. Married. <laughs> baby, don't hurt me no more. Uh, the rogue, right? Han Solo is always in, at a perpetual state of "I don't want to be here." Yeah. Why am I in the middle of this? But then he starts falling for Leia, and love kind of carries him through the rest of the series. And I think that's interesting because the new series, the new trilogy, there is no love connection. No one loves anyone. The closest thing it's, we have is... I would actually say it's more of a focus on familial and uh, yeah. friendship love. Yeah. It's yeah. 2019, okay? We don't need no love. We don't need no love. <laughs> it's 2019. A black person could be a main character in Star Wars. How dare you, sir? No! <laughs> how, dare you, how dare you make the very first... I'm melting! <laughs> how dare you make the very first scene of our new trilogy as a black man in the Stormtrooper suit? <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. Also, the fact they had a black man in the space Nazi uniform is... It's mm, kind of... Yee, yee. Yee, yee, yee. Think about it that way. Now, um, I, so there's some areas that I'm blank... In my also, mind. Adam Driver is sexy as hell. Yeah, especially okay. when we, that super white... He's got Adam big Driver. hands. <laughs> he talks in a weird way. I watched him in the report. It, uh, it's like uh, on Amazon. It's a two-hour-long movie. He has man hands. I was I was listening to a podcast and it's called uh, the film reroll. Check it out, by the way. Good stuff. Uh, somebody went to acting school with Adam Driver after he's out of the Marines. Dude was a nut. Apparently, he ate a whole rotisserie chicken between classes while running around campus. Man, he had I eat a whole mind, rotisserie huh? chicken a night. No. <laughs> <laughs> but between classes, winter like ten minutes. Uh, well, do that. That's pretty, universe, that's right? pretty messed up. You get a lot of dry white meat in there. That's the problem. That, that dry well, he's a very dry white guy. He, hey, oh! that, that dry yeah, but white his big guy. hands could grab the whole thing and he could run down the aisles. Is, with his is this hand big hands guy. thing like your fetish? Like, what's no, going on? It's just, I, remember, I saw, like, a, there was a scene in the report where he had his hand on top of, a, like, a chair. I'm like, that hand is disproportionate to his head. <laughs> you know who also has Do big have, hands? Ooh, force choking. Ooh. ooh. Zaddy. <laughs> yeah. My mind would go, Daddy. you don't have to use the force. Your hand's big enough from where you're standing five feet away to grab me still. Winter Your wants hand... to be choked up by Adam Driver. Pro tip. <laughs> Haiku. Haiku review. Uh, Pro tip. That... Sharks play later on time. <laughs> that, that... All right, Winter, we interrupted you earlier. Sorry. You were making an original point, though? Yeah. Yeah, his hands are big. <laughs> Before that. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, now I can't statement. remember. Oh, oh, no. This was... Uh, I don't know. There's some parts that my mind are blank about uh, certain Star Wars things. How is it possible that um, when is the transition from the stormtroopers no longer being clones of? I was people? thinking about that the other day. It's it's actually explained. It's day. <laughs> it's explained uh, right after Revenge of the Sith. They stop using the clone program because it's too faulty, and the, so they just start indoctrinating and brainwashing random people essentially. And that's how Finn kind of got tied in because he was like tied in with all that that um, stormtrooper conditioning. So yes, essentially, he, he take to him for some what time. took over for the uh, the younglings of the Jedi Academy could be the stormtrooper, like not, the academy. So no, okay, 
That's oof. Come here, youngling. Did you survive his onslaught? <laughs> no, no, just him. like you know. Come how, here, little boy. Let's get dead. Like an army takes over, and like this is no, this is no longer uh, uh, free uh, high school. This is now a doctrinary no, school. Man, you know, <laughs> they just the Sith just employ Pennywise. Oh, come here, little boy. No, man, it's just you go to high school, you see a poster that says "I choose you." Yes. This is no for, longer uh, lightsaber. It is. <laughs> Except for uh, Uncle Sam, it's it's uh, the Emperor. I choose you. Sign up to be a stormtrooper. Oh man, this is getting off base way it's, too it's fast. Like, it's so, like military. Explain. It's like oh, the U.S. Dude. military, Doug. You know. Okay, so essentially, the stormtroopers, as far as I know, mm-hmm. were taken oh, away from the clone cold program cold. because the clones were just tired of being sent to die mm-hmm. and living short ass lives, like Mister Meeseeks. Essentially, yeah. And so Palpatine cut deals like, hey. Kill all Jedi, no more of that. Oh, that's Order 66. Okay. Yeah. So that would be an interesting, like, little side movie that's that they did. Why I want of, like, a clone going all around, all around. A familiar yeah. face. Yes. <laughs> uh, we had a deal, Palpatine. One thing, one fascinating <laughs> thing about Star Wars is giant gaps in time. Yeah. You know, between, like, Revenge of the Sith and. Uh, Let's say a new even hope. in the Mandalorian, that's like thirty. That's like at least twenty years. Yeah, the Mandalorian takes place between uh, Return of the Jedi and A Force Awakens. That's like well, 40 in Episode years. Four, they're the time jump of of like a couple of months, I believe. Yeah, because when, when you uh, go to the Force, something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I love that. There's so much room to wiggle in Star Wars lore. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you well, like to what... wiggle. I, do I like mean, that's later. what gives you credence to, like, all the other erotica and all the other uh, sources. Like, <laughs> freaking Clone Wars, guess what happens? It, it's There's a time skip near the end. The Clone Wars took a where long they time. Sh- yeah, exactly. It's either Clone Wars Rebels. I forget which one it is. I think it's there's, Clone Wars. There's a skit where it shows Obi-Wan on Tatooine, old and decrepit as hell. And guess who finds him? Darth Maul. Oh. Mm-hmm. And so they have this dialogue, and there's like, about 10 seconds of stillness. Then they both just do one slash. Obi Wan gets it. Darth Maul collapses, and if anything, it's really fun because Darth Maul collapses and dies in Obi Wan's arms. But this is really I, I'll always moment. love you. But I'm in, but I'm crazy to say that Obi Wan's the best Jedi ever. Well, yes. Okay. A choosers can't be better. There's than lore me. in the storyline of a Jedi that's better than him. That's the chosen one. <laughs> oh, exactly. Okay, that's a good question. Who is the true chosen one? Is I mean, it, it really was Anakin? Is it Anakin? Is it, it was Anakin. Is it Rey? It's going to be matter? Princess Leia. <laughs> Queen Leia. I mean, Queen okay, Leia. to be fair, Queen What's Leia, like, managed to get herself out of a vacuum in space with no training. The last five months What's was just she didn't them have doing CGI work on the last There's a lot six. of time that passed between Reven- uh, Return of the Jedi and Fallen Order. She could have been training the whole time. Oh, that's true. She could have been some sick, weird Jedi counselor that doesn't fight, but she has mad force powers. Or we're, we all have metachlorians. We and do, we can actually. all be Jedi. But that's that, the entire point of the story, somehow. But who was like, the chosen George one? Lucas made that canon. Everyone has metachlorians. Some just yep. have more. Yep, some yeah. just have more. Um, Everyone has medic. I have more. It's called. Well, how many do you have? More than you. <laughs> in, in the real world, it's called melatonin. Uh <laughs> Well, <laughs> have, you, have you guys ever heard about the metachlorian? She, she melatonin. Wow. This is like going to a racist to tirade real yeah, I need to slow down on all of that. I, 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 co- I co-signed for a split second. I was like, wait, what? Winter, I'm in the South. You are not. You cannot do that. That's nah. that's that's cultural appropriation. 101. Well, excuse me if I ever try to join the conversation. Okay. Let's talk about. I thought you were about to say join the clan. I was really worried for a second. He, I choose you. <laughs> I I think oh, people geez. I think people would are enjoying the joke. Okay. Can we talk about <laughs> the Jedi and the Sith? The most hypocritical two sides of a coin ever created. Or you mean one is Zen just don't feel anything, the other one is embrace feel literally everything. everything. Yeah. And every There's normal no person area. just goes Keep me out of your religious schism bullcrap. I'm going to go farm my potatoes. You know how bad the Jedi Sith schism has wrecked their universe right? time and time again? Because oh, my God. The, it was, it was so not ignorant. just the Jedi and the Sith. It's the Jedi and the Mandalorians, right? Well, the, you got to think about the Mandalorian war that the yeah. Jedi just inserted themselves into. 
You know what I mean? And the Sith are always plotting to, you know, what is the, okay, what is the Sith's end game that they just run shit? Power. It's power. just power? Yeah. Power. However, like, isn't that it? why there can only be the, but it's the, individual like, Supreme power. Sith and like the Sith Apprentice? Well, it's the rule no. of two. So the rule of two is actually something different. The rule of two came from the fall of the Sith Empire. Okay. When a Sith Lord found out, basically figured out that if there's too many Sith, they're too noticeable. And okay. so two, one Sith Master and one Sith Apprentice need to work together to work from the inside and destroy the Jedi. So and once the Jedi play, are destroyed, then... the pl- once the Jedi are destroyed, why bother sharing the power? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you just you wasted that one person who's infiltrating out. Because he may die, he may get struck down, he may get converted. But no matter what, you know, the damage is done. I mean, so Sidious I- is a you know who Sidious is. Like he was the he was the Sith apprentice for a long time. Took over Plagueis and figured out. You know, I just like this power. I'm going to take it and never let go. Yeah, and that's okay. kind of... But then again, the Jedi Order is also about some weird level of control. Oh, God. The Jedi Order was such a flaw. It's super, like, just frustrating to see it happen. Is so stagnant in their... And that's, and that's one thing that Ryan Johnson tried to just throw out. The stagnant doctrine right. of the Jedi Order. And that we just could start over. Don't you know that? Like, the Force is going to be the Force no matter what. Could I... Can, can we also over? point out, too, that I think Ryan Johnson did a very, like creative thing and it was only like in 10 seconds of the of the movie where the gun smuggler played by benicio del toro shows that he sells to like both the the scummy guy sells to both the uh rebel alliance as well as the, the first order yeah the first order yeah uh, so also i think i think his name is rian johnson we might, we might be getting that wrong or yeah uh sade sadie ryan Ann johnson uh <laughs> <laughs> a a Ron Ryan Juson. <laughs> okay, make your point. Make your point. Make your point. <laughs> Sometimes I forget it, folks. That's okay. Uh, Ryan Johnson, uh, working. Yeah, yeah, makes it like kind of like, yeah, kind of show like look, the the it rains on the on the what you perceive as good and what you perceive as bad. We're all we're we're in this like we're all muddy in this together. I mean, the sense. point. The point that like pure good is damaging yeah. is super relevant it's to the super series as a whole. Fascinating to me. Right. It's the most fascinating part of the whole of the whole mythos is that either direction is toxic. It's extremism. Extremism is bad in general. And in general, and that's why gray Jedi and those who are called white, you know, white are you know gray Jedi, you know, they're seen as outsiders because they're like, no, you need. And, and um, apparently, um, Mace Windu. Was a, was a great Jedi as well. Oh, that's yeah. why his lightsaber was purple, because it was blue and red. No, that's so, not yeah. why it was purple, but... It's, not, it's purple because Samuel yeah. Jackson wanted it purple. Yeah. So, so, it became... so what do y'all think of the theory that once this movie happens, Jedi will no longer be a thing, but in memoriam, Skywalkers are going to be the new Jedi? Uh, this I... is something that's very real, and it's very scary. Uh, I don't think it's going to be like that. Because I, Jedi, I'm with Mike. I, I think it, it might happen. There's a very good likelihood, and I hate it. Happen, and it's a scary thought because I hate it. I get it. And Disney's having this big thing they did it with Endgame, where they're just we're going to just carpet burn the entire whatever made us money, right? Endgame mm-hmm. shut down mm-hmm. comic book movies, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, what? Do, where is it going now? It's been publicly known that Episode Nine is the end of the Skywalker trilogy, the Skywalker saga. Right. That's, that's all Star Wars is up till now, right? So we're God, I hope it stays that way. Where do you God, go I here, do. Right? But the thing is, is that you still need to sell lightsabers at Disneyland. You still need to sell Wookiee plushes and Baby Yodas and stuff. So they're not yeah. going anywhere. But at the same time, it's like, I don't really care that much for it. I'll go watch it to see the end of a saga I like. But if you expect me to go to Disney Plus and watch everything afterwards tough luck i it's already fun. have three other streamers i'm like i have three other streaming services i'm thinking about cutting down one already i'm not gonna buy disney plus and that's what i want to talk oh, about which one is, are you gonna cut yeah uh well right now i have amazon prime hulu and netflix i'm cut. thinking about just cutting out hulu entirely yeah cut out hulu because if you have disney but seinfeld you have, you have disney plus you can get hulu anyway <laughs> oh. but um <laughs> 
the future of Star Wars is murky, and they Super. better have a they better have a good ass idea. That's all I know. Well, I so I'm probably on a different side where I've been on record of saying that they could literally have like a Star Wars show for the summer, Star Wars show for the spring, Star Wars show for the Christmas time, and I'll be there. They already have one of those. It was terrible. It was a beautiful. No, 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 I'm talking about like having the Mandalorian be for like one time of the year and then have like Obi-Wan Kenobi's show be for the other time. And I was about to say, there was a Star Wars Christmas special, and we're about to have some special words about that one. Star Wars Christmas. Uh, Chewbacca wore a robe and he was beautiful. Yeah, but I'm saying like I could dog, <laughs> like I, I I need them to keep making more content. <laughs> and, oh no, your your wish will be your will be yes. granted. It's uh, just how now, is that content going to be? I right. mean, to be fair, they've said that it's super hard for them to come up with content because they don't have any comics or books or anything like Marvel does. Because hey, they struck they them need down. To talk to me. That's their fault. That's such That's craziness. me smacking myself in the forehead, ladies and right. gentlemen. Right. But here's they the thing. Are be- you can't grow from existing content. Right. Because you're shoehorning yourself with 40 years of comic book, Jedi twins, Mara Jade dogma. Right? You have to start clean if you want to be creative. With Marvel, you can pick and choose whatever from any storyline and make it make sense. Star Wars fans don't play that, dude. All right, Winter, make your point. Sorry. Just, so yeah. I, I totally think that they are crazy going that they don't have enough content. They could easily take from the stuff that they've retconned and mix it all together to make something for the future. Okay? Oh, heck yes. And heck. they could easily do that. And and another thing is, like, they they just need to talk to any Star Wars fan out there, they probably have, I made this script when I was 12 years old. Here's you know an what, idea. <laughs> you know the problem with that? The problem with that is they can play together. Right? No. But, but George, together. do you uh, not know that story, Winter? Okay, yeah. I'll tell it real quick. Is is George Lucas is in his office and they're discussing plot lines for the new trilogy that he was planning out. Yeah. And he, takes a, he takes two action figures. One is from a character that existed during the Knights of the Old Republic time frame. The 2,000 other, years ago. Like 2,000 years ago. The other one is like Darth Maul. And he just he's just not paying attention to the conversation. And he goes, what if they became friends, these two? Well, that would be a cool story. And one of his plot lords was like, uh, George, those characters are separated by 2,000 years of time. But they could just play together, though, right? We could just make it happen. Time warps, right? We could just make it happen. And everybody in the room just did a collective head slap because they realized this man was completely disconnected from reality at that point. Okay, <laughs> like, that's a funny straws, story. That's a funny story. <laughs> so that's what I keep referencing is... But that's the, well, why don't the they just play? George that's, like, that. that's like the D&D guys going, oh, she just yeah. forgot. But that's right. not that's not necessarily what I'm saying because I'm still saying you grab the source material, but you still have the plot overlords come out and push something out from that. Well, like, the plot overlords can be both beneficial and detrimental as hell. We all know that. Saying. That's what I'm saying. Like the ones who made that cut of <laughs> the last movie with no women and no female characters oh, in it the, at you all. Mean the, you mean the China cut? The China. <laughs> the China cut. Yeah, well, that's uh, not the plot lord's business. That's just China being China. China. Let's, but let's no, say, it wasn't the Chinese thing. It was just like a troll literally made the movie without any female character. Uh, okay. No, okay. I, I mentioned that because in the China poster, they took out all mention of Finn. To oh, the yeah. But they do movie, not. How did China not. watch Black Panther? They hated it. It made no money in China. Watching Panther. <laughs> Ready Player One is the Black Panther for my for us. <laughs> oh, did y'all know? Quick tri- bit of trivia: In China, they make everything about BB-8 because it's the cutest little non-threatening no, thing on the planet. Actually, it's because his name is Lucky. Oh, eight is sense. a very lucky, auspicious number in Chinese. Uh, We're culture. running out of BB-8 doll stat. Oh, that, that became that of... was a thing. Actually, that was a thing multiple yeah. times. You think that wasn't part of the marketing, guys? You think? Oh, was... heck yeah! Synergy. I mean, Synergy. also BB looks like eight. It's, eight. it's so borderline it's Fast and Furious style marketing. It's, it's, it's going. It. Let's get this Thai martial arts actor into the. Film. They don't. I mean, they don't have anyone punching cars yet. So there's Can that. We talk about the marketing for us. <laughs> okay. A okay. I, I don't want this to get too long in the tooth, but. I just want to talk about the marketing for a second, just like yeah. how the marketing started to mold this series as early as Re- Return of the Jedi. The marketing. It, 
it became a it became a vehicle for toys. I mean, oh, well, the first one had action figures. Like you had to mail, you had to send this thing into mail, and it was like a certain amount of money, and then you would get these action figures. But it wasn't the marketing overload that it's become. Though. No, no. I mean, so the number one vehicle. What are the two products you can think of off the top of your head that you've seen everything for advertising wise? Marvel and. In Star Wars. For, I mean, for Star Wars, sorry. In regards oh, to Star Wars memorabilia. Lego uh, Millennium yep. Falcon. Millennium yep, Falcons, yep, yep. And, um, and Ice, Ice Cooler R2-D2. <laughs> R2-D2 is a big one. Darth Vader is a big one. Darth I'm Vader thinking, like Winter ever. said, the Lego Millennium Falcon, that thing is a million, make, million dollar yeah. maker, yeah. as well as just general lightsabers. Yeah, there like, are – there's yeah. a custom – God, there's a custom website that just makes your own lightsabers. Yep, I've, I've seen it. It's dope. They're so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> but they're really cool. But yeah, I custom mean, Ultra Sabers. That's what it's called. Ultra Winter, have you heard about this? No, I don't want it. I don't need to go down this no, dark it, hole. <laughs> it, is dark oh, hole. it is indeed a dark hole. So, in essence, guys, just to wrap up this Star Wars talk. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you hope for the future of Star Wars? Like Austin, what what would be your ideal Star Wars future? Like the next, mm. let's say five years. Well, first I'm giving Winter a link on the uh, group chat. <laughs> Make him see it. Make him we'll see, see it. Yeah. Look, so, look. In the next five years, I would like Star Wars to take a break after December coming oh. soon. I wish. And then make a movie in five years for the next trilogy. Give us a break, Jesus. Oh, make us miss it. Star Wars has always been better when you made us miss it. Yeah, Didn't true. they already announce the date for the next Star Wars movie? They canceled they did, it. It's like twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two. I thought it was twenty twenty four or the, something. The game, the, the oh, okay. Game of Thrones dudes were supposed to do it, but they're hacks, so they're not doing it anymore. <laughs> oh, they got they got really they they're no longer on the project. So right. Neither is Ryan Johnson. Supposedly, yeah, he was supposed to get his I, own trilogy too. I would. I God, I hate Disney for doing that to him. Anyway, yep. The next five years, put him out the pasture, man. I would love it if we got a focus, a, a trilogy that didn't really focus on Jedi. Instead, it just kind of focused on everything else, and the Jedi were a side factor. Cheers Make in it. space. <laughs> I'm thinking more so like, oh, hey, there's like the entire like uh, fringes yeah. of space where law is basically not non-existent and aliens are hostile. I want to go there. I want to see some weird stuff and make a side character a force user, just a side character, not even really important. Yeah, right. Uh, the four, I would uh, love that. I'm with the force, and the force is with me, kind of situation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's interesting to say that because it's it's coming like commonplace. The best way that I've just like the best way I can describe the Mandalorian to my dad was it's Star Wars as a Western, yeah, <laughs> type thing. It's a, it's a Western Star Wars story. Definitely. Yeah, Star Wars is becoming like a placeholder for like That's fine. Vietnam and space for aliens. You just go Star Wars and Star Wars, Vietnam, Star Wars. And um, which it sounds like a killer idea now, Vietnam, yeah. Star Wars. And that's, I, I'm right there with you with yeah. what I would want for the future is I want the the universe is so macro. It's so big mm-hmm. that you can tell any story you want. Can you imagine a can you imagine like a bright burn kind of horror movie about for evil force users that aren't Sith? Yeah. Oh, I would love that so it's, much. It's like it's like pitch black. You fall onto a planet of a force sensitive creatures, and it's just a it's just a horror movie, dude. There are like several races that are force sensitive by default. That's what I'm saying. I want to see like some like illithid mind flayer like creatures out there just that just you. basically eat brains. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like scanners, but yeah, but with like Star Wars, dude. So it would be neat <laughs> if they went back. Maybe they can't do like a whole movie, but they could do like an anthology Star Wars series where like one episode is like or, horror based. Right, I'm down for that. I, yeah. I would be down for like you said, like a war, like a legit war movie, like right. a a legit comedy, like a Star Wars, a legit funny Star Wars comedy. Uh, yeah. Maybe but, some like actual mysticism. That'd be kind of fun too. Yeah. Like, oh hey, here's some ghosts. Apparently, the force could do anything. Right. Just make the, there. Just, yeah. It's oh crazy. god, there was in the expanded universe. There was a Sith who was so powerful in the force, he could rip the souls out of everybody on an entire planet, make a bomb, and destroy a planet with it. That's that does, they, does that's, sound like that's a not that's a Naruto <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> 
Jar 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 but yeah, I just want Star Wars to just steer away from Jedi. What are these words you talk of? <laughs> right. They're and, animal nerds. And I always pitch my idea when we talk about Star Wars, where... I haven't heard advertisement that alert! I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> long time. <laughs> uh, Our secret where sponsor. you go to a, a distant planet off, of, of the, off the beaten path, and it's a normal city. And then you see the pan, the camera, like follow a bunch of children running through the, running through the aisles and alleyways, children, and then and then they're children. like grabbing sticks and stuff. And then you get to their destination, and then they start whacking at this body on the ground, and then you go, Misa, no, Misa, no, and then uh. <laughs> it's Jar Jar Binks, and this takes place after Revenge of the Sith, where he is a village idiot. And he, it's all, it's a story of redemption where he now needs to uh, regain a little bit of self respect. Okay. okay. I mean, this Imagine, is after he became a Sith Lord? This is after he became a Sith not Lord. Not canon! Not canon! Okay. This is one thing I want to say about uh, Rise of the Skywalker <laughs> is if the Emperor is in this movie, if the Emperor's in this movie, I just want him to be eyes, a brain, and a spinal cord. I want, I want him, him to, to be a ghost. I want him yeah. to legit just be a ghost. No. I want him to be disturbingly gross like Homeboy in Robocop 2, where it's just an eyeball in a jar with a brain and a spinal cord that does everything through the Force. He can't talk. He, he, he talks through the Force, and it's just a floating spinal cord in a brain. Okay, counterpoint. I want him to be a, a legit ghost, yeah. just bound to the Death Star, unable to move on. So he decided to say, screw it, I'm going to destroy everything from the shadows. <laughs> He, he has like he has like a death field around the around the Death Star, then and whoever have, enters it is just like the Rudge. <laughs> then you have Obi Wan Kenobi and uh, quite like all the all the great Jedi that died now fight Dude. the Emperor in a CGI battle. Oh, <laughs> can you imagine a Final Fantasy VII <laughs> level Knights of the Round Table where it's oh, Rey and it's yeah. all the Jedi Knights striking mm-hmm. at a Palpatine at the same and time? Rey goes, Assemble. Can you imagine like how sick that would be? You That'd be actually pretty cool. In. Like that. And the Knights of Justice taking evil down. Just have, like, power metal. That's all I want. That's all I want. You, you know what would be ballsy as all hell? Is if they destroy Palpatine, they destroy the Force forever in the universe. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> or they, they, but they Just they would have the to do forest, they would have Fuck to do like an X Men style ending where Magneto no, but, no force for anybody. Chess piece. I know, but like destroy everything's force. That would be a whole. Yeah. Just nuke the force for the entire galaxy. Tom. Burn it all. Burn it. Yeah. No force for anyone ever. Our hands don't deserve this force. You know you know how many fans would just throw up in their mouths after watching that? I would laugh maniacally. Just that would be awesome. Just no just more like, force for anybody. <laughs> Guess what, man? I mean, they can go It'd be here. very much a situation of you didn't win. You didn't win. It's it's the snap at the end of Infinity War, man. It's little kids crying in their chairs. You know. Oh, maybe. I was. I remember and being that, there for that release night of Infinity Wars. Seeing all the people cry felt so good. I laughed. <laughs> I, I tell this story all the time where the snap was happening and Peter Parker was dying. Spoilers. And I just heard a grown man behind me go, no, no, no. He's just screaming and all kids start crying. And you saw parents like telling them that the Black Panther wasn't yeah. dead and trying to like reassure their children. And I thought it was Awesome. I was like, Spider Man will return in Far From Home. Yeah. I, like, I remember like, like that the extra credit scene when, when Nick Fury dies, spoiler, and um, Miss Marvel shows up, spoiler, on the uh on the fax machine on the on the pager the on the pager. <laughs> yes. And it's like I was the only person in the audience that went, okay. Woo! I know okay. who that is. Okay. No one you. everyone else was going, who? What is that? What is that? Who is that? Not to get too far off tangent, but I remember at the end of Avengers and seeing Thanos. And having my grandmother goes, who is that? Oh, that's Thanos. <laughs> who is that? Oh, he's a problem. <laughs> he's going to be a problem very much later. And have 10 years later, you know, that happened. But, oh, but it's, speaking, it's, it's just Grimace. That's all. It's just Grimace. It's just Grimace. Speaking of Grimace, uh, I w- I'm going to Grimace if this movie's not good. What's the over-under on Rise of the Jedi being good? I'm going to say a solid... I'm going to say for like a solid score in Rise general. Skywalker, I'm going to put like a... Solid. Yeah, sorry, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. I'm what size Rise of Skywalker estimated around a seven out of ten in general. What's what's your over under winter? On oh, Rise by of far, I I mean, 
being I, good. Personally, I say there's a high chance of it being good. I want to go like a like a seven five or a seven out of ten chance yeah. of it. Being good. Yeah, I think if yeah. I think if anything, we're gonna enjoy a lot out of it. There's gonna be yeah. more good than bad, but there's gonna be enough stuff that people are just kind of gloss over. You just kind of go, "That was really stupid." By the way, yeah. well, that's Star Wars because they nip, this nip picked to all hell. I'm going to say it's going to be like, uh, because it's J.J. Abrams and, it's, and because of the vitriol from The Last Jedi, it's going to be the safest thing you've ever seen in your life. Oh. It's going to be vanilla ice cream on your birthday. Ren needs to die. He's not Ren gonna die, needs to die a it's dark rise Jedi. of the Skywalker. Or Re- it's going to it's gonna be his Ren. rise. Kylo. Kylo oh, yeah. Ren. Ben Skywalker is going to not die, dude. I need him to die. I need him to be dark and shit and just a bad person. I need him to die a villain for once. Star Wars, give you know, me a villain. You know, Star Wars loves its 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 catharsis, man. They love their their turn. Darth Vader and Kylo Ren fight it out. It's because 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 Skywalker. Oh, okay. Oh my God. If if Kylo Ren dies, a light Jedi. And Anakin Skywalker's ghost comes over and hugs him. I'm going to flip. They're going to make and the that. father from The Shining fights the Emperor. <laughs> Don't say that because you haven't seen Doctor Sleep. <laughs> I read the synopsis on Wiki. Oh, that's. I, I need to. I need to. I need to read the novel novel before I see the movie. Uh, it doesn't help. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. It still stings. <laughs> the pain still remains. Well, hey, at least we got one good movie this year from Stephen King with. Uh, Pet Cemetery. Oh, I was going to say Gerald's Game, yeah. but that's just me. You don't want to go down that cemetery. Okay, to be fair, Gerald's Game was really good. It's God, it was godlike. What about he, the one that he did with his son about a bunch of grass? <laughs> I watched that. It wasn't that what? bad. The then, one, yeah. Which one's that? It's the Netflix movie where the the, the kid goes into this. Super oh, grass. 1929 or something like not, that. No, no, no. This is a different one. one where it's like the grass. Jesus Christ, is people! It's stupid. I watched it. It was kind of it was kind of cool. But well, anywho, I guess, is it, it as stupid as the Langoliers? Is it as stupid? Stu- it, no, it's stupider than the Tommy Knockers. Uh, then I rest my case. Yeah. Oh, Tommy. Which one was the one about the cat people who slept with who the mo- the mother and son cat aliens slept with each other? You, you know what? Uh, you, you, just, <laughs> you, you just invoked the MOTN reviews because I've been wanting to review the Sleepwalkers for a minute. Uh, <laughs> see what, you, what you did? You, you see what you did? <laughs> One of you have to now do the MLTM reviews. Of no one mentioned Wars. Street Fighters. <laughs> no, no one mentions Monster Hunter. Well, hey, guess what? Guess what, Winter? What? It's coming to PC pretty soon, buddy. I'm going to pursue a real show. Anyway, what's your final thoughts on Star Wars in general, Austin? Okay, so like I said, Star Wars has an inherent hope. that make, uh, Hope for me always gets to me. The, the story of one person who is at the bottom of society's barrel fighting back not just because they want to be better because they are better than the people around them and generally care about other people that gets to me and star wars does that well but they also has a lot of failings that gets in the way and clouds the ultimate view in the end so i like star wars and i really really want to see more of it but I hope they stop being so cowardly to stop taking risks. Very good. What's your final thoughts, Winner? My final thoughts are uh, pretty much identical. Like the the Star Wars needs to be taking a lot more risks in what they're doing, and uh, it's. I'm definitely shutting my phone down. I um, thank you. Oh, you know, you're welcome. <laughs> 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 and uh, you. Know, it's so uh, I I watch movies a lot. Like I have the brain where I'll watch a terrible movie, but I'll still like dive deep in my head of like the philosophical consequences of their decisions, or like what the different characters are supposed to be, uh, like illustrations of how like how deep did George Lucas want to go in this hero's journey type thing, yeah. which was big for him. Like, did he have it, like, in the mind, like, Phil K. Dick did for uh, Man in a High Castle type stuff? Or not not the hero's journey, but stuff stuff guiding his writing process. But anyway, that doesn't even matter. George Lucas has nothing to do with the series anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> let the, let the <laughs> <laughs> that just gets to me for some dang reason. Want <laughs> to let the baby die? Dog. Yeah. So I, I like I said, I like I I will be a sucker for Star Wars stuff. I wish D and D or Wizard of the Coast made a deal to release like a, a version of their system for Star Wars. Unfortunately, Fantasy Flight Games has the rights or something like that to the Star Wars franchise to make RPGs. Yep. Uh, and there, of course, F- Fantasy Flights has this connotation of well, you have to purchase these wacky dice to play this game for with us. Oh um, yeah, they have like weird symbols all over the movie. Yeah, you oh you got the flip flop. Now you get the flam bam. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you got to snorkel the scoop loop. Yeah, yeah. I uh, mean, there are good RPGs out there for for uh, Star Wars, but right? Like I have the art. I used to have the West End games. D, where it was just like nothing but D six for Star Wars, mm. and yeah, that was man. that was fun for a bit. And mm. uh, yeah, so those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts, Mike? Oh man, the thing about Star Wars and the thing that I love about it the most is Star Wars has is one of those properties that has unlimited potential. Like Star Wars has the potential to capture the imagination of anybody at any age, like a good like a good Star Wars scene will make you ten years old again. In your movie, in your movie seat, wide eyed and just mind blown, it can literally do anything. Like, you can make like a Gran Turismo level Star Wars racing game. You can make a mystery drama. You can make a novella. You can make right. you can do anything with Star Wars, anything. But like back to what Austin was saying is that will they take the risk? Will they will they thumb their nose at convention? Will they take a will they take a a, a hit? to their pocket to make something that may be a bit more thought provoking or something that's a bit more challenging. That's not, you know, bottom, you know, that, that caters to the lowest common denominator, you know, and it's frustrating because it has the potential to be so good, you know? You know, something that I I forgot to even bring up and it's a possibility like in the long-term scheme of things, like, you know how Cloverfield there's in that, video uh oh, series yeah. they have this thing of like okay this script isn't really popping what we need to do put it in the uh cloverfield universe type thing uh, do you th- <laughs> okay i get the answer already do do you think Ten cloverfield that- was a good movie 10 cloverfield lane was a good yeah movie. but, but do you think that star wars off. had that potential of going we have the script here but it didn't have enough Bars up I think that would be a cop. I think Star Wars needs to be one of those things that's foundation up Star Wars because the fans will sniff it out in a hot second. Right. I think Star Wars you needs know. the Marvel treatment where they get mainline movies but multiple different series that are actually yeah. good quality. That's, that's what true. I'm saying. It's just you can do anything, and if you want it to be part of some collective universe, figure that's out a place fine. for Kelsey Grammer, please, in the series. Man, yeah. just give I, I mean, if you're gonna he, say he, Fallen, Fallen Order is a good piece of extra content. content. Kelsey Grammer needs the work, so if you can get him uh, like a position and also, somewhere in the Disney if you're listening, you're not, but don't be <laughs> afraid to put your to put faith in wacky directors. Yeah. Don't let don't let Ryan Johnson scare you away from having a Mike Flanagan direct I would Star love Wars a, movie. I would love a Taiki Watiti. I would love a Star like, Wars. I would love a Taiki Watiti Star Wars. Yeah, 100%. I would love a Coen's Star brother Retro. Star Wars movie. Can you imagine a Coen's brother Star Coen's Wars movie? Bro, yeah, that'd be weird. It'd be it would be different. Hey, man, it's just parsecs. <laughs> or even a even a, a James Wan Star Wars movie. Yeah, it just the Conjuring. Just... <laughs> Why not make a Star Wars movie on a on a shoestring budget? Let's see what happens. Uh, or man. you get, or you get like really really weird, and you took you take a uh, Bong Joon Ho, who was the director for Snowpiercer. That's what I'm saying. Snowpiercer, yeah. Snowpiercer is just put Snowpiercer on Hoth. I mean, Chris Chris <laughs> Evans was Chris Evans was in Snowpiercer, and guess what? He loved it. He yeah. loved being in that wacky movie. Yeah, yeah, man. Star Wars can do anything and has so much potential. But will Disney allow it to really reach its, reach that potential? I mm. guess time will tell. Yeah. You know? So, before we close out, I have some quick uh, little questions. Sure, but it's like a diversion. So. Sure. We all love Star Wars yep. in some way. 
but we know it's going to come to a close soon for at least a few years. What other medias or series have shows or other bits of content coming out that you're looking out for? Oh, uh, man. I am... I'm really curious to see what they do with the Star Wars. I mean, not Star, uh, Star Wars. I've been saying that about 50,000 times tonight. I want to. Hmm. I meant to say, given what they're doing with what they did with Bumblebee, I'm very curious to see where they take Transformers. <laughs> now that it's taken away from Michael Bay in a weird way. I'm curious to see if they keep that interesting and fun and just kind of irreverent and light. But also Star... But also... Damn it, Star Wars. But also, <laughs> trans, but also Transformers-y. I'm really curious to see what they do with, with Transformers. I'm also very curious to see what they do with um, what DC Comics does with The Batman. I'm oh, boy. See, I'm curious to see if that's the new jumping on point for something positive for yeah, DC just Comics. Just not so nitty gritty, please. No, I think I think they learned their lesson. I think it's going to be a good... I mean, just Matt Batman Reeves... Pushing out the eyes of the penguin. His blood on that's his what gloves. you want. <laughs> Taste the he blood. just like starts lapping the blood in the penguin's eye socket. Yeah. Oh, man. Sorry, me! Matt Reeves is a great director, and I have full faith that he's going to put out something that's going to just blow our minds. So I'm very excited for The Batman, just because of that director alone. I don't care about the cast. The cast is going to do what he tells him to do. That director alone is going to produce something insane, and I just, I'm just i very curious. I'm, cur- I'm more curious about that than any Marvel movie right now. Just to see, what, see, just to see if they let him mold the DC universe, you know? Like, who's going to appear in that movie? Like, will they mention other heroes? Is it going to be a Nolan thing where Batman's in this bubble and he can't play outside of his Gotham City? Like, I'm just very <laughs> fascinated about what they do. Like, can we get a Hal Jordan mention in this The Batman movie? Or an Aquaman mention? Or That's who I was talking to, The Flash. And he... The Flash. <laughs> yeah. And he told me he would be there yeah. in a flash. But I don't know. I'm really looking forward to see what they do with Transformers and Batman to answer that question so i'm looking forward to uh hbo had the show i believe it's hbo coming out oh that is like uh Watch lovecraft Watchmen. Ooh, really yeah it's like uh i think maybe jordan peele may be connected to it as well but it's it, like uh combining all the lovecraftian literature and everything really i never heard of that and i know mike mike g really loves hp lovecraft and all. oh please don't put that <laughs> i had no there. idea that's interesting <laughs> yeah i'll look that up while i'm talking then there's also uh i'm still going through all the episodes of star trek uh oh, i took a hiatus yeah. lovecraft country called. lovecraft country I what in up. the world i never heard of that at all man bad robot is connected to it so they're doing oh heck like- yeah they're doing kind of like a um, a Castle Rock kind of situation. Yeah. Um, Lovecraft Country follows Atticus Black as he joins up with his friend <laughs> Letitia and his uncle George embark on a road trip across 1950s Jim Crow America in search of his missing father. This begins a struggle to survive and overcome both the racist terrors of white America and the terrifying monsters that could be ripped from Lovecraft paperback. That sounds so, like watching. Uh, by the way, Jordan Peele is connected to it. If you did not get the, uh, if the I didn't say that hints, before, yeah, I'm, I'm sold. I'm game. Yeah, that sounds crazy, dude. I need to look this up for a trailer because there has to be something I don't, somewhere. Yeah, this got to be. I don't think there is. Like, I mean, I still, I still need to finish. <laughs> I need to watch the Watchmen uh, TV show. Watchmen uh, is so good. I just want to get to watch somebody. Get a, a trial of HBO to watch it. Just binge watch Wait, it all. Who has time to be racist when an unknowable one is just floating down the street? I mean, it's, it's Lovecraft, so it's already racist. It's always racist. I, so it. it had to say it. We can't... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Who, who has time for racism when Cthulhu is just in Milwaukee? Yeah. <laughs> just floating We around. need to build a wall to get this ancient one away from our peoples. Now, Casey... <laughs> I I, oh, I was going to say something bad. Move on from Thank this you. conversation. Thank you. Oh boy. Uh, so from... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank anyway. you. The time. So for me, uh, the things I'm looking forward to the most this month, The Witcher comes out. Ooh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Like legit. I know Winter, you're not that terribly excited, but oh, no. honestly, you should you should give it a shot. Like it's going to be very similar to, to Game of Thrones. It's going to be very political. I can't. I, I can't wait to see. 
my boy Henry Cavill being Geralt of Rivia does. He looks yeah. really good. I forgot to mention two other things. <laughs> oh, okay, go ahead. I'll, I'll continue afterwards. Go ahead. Go nuts. Okay, man. there there's the also the next series in the Pope series of Jude Law playing a Pope. Oh, the young Pope. Yeah, the young Pope. Now there is the pope. new Pope where uh, John young Malkovich pope. plays the Pope in charge while Jude Law is in a coma. <laughs> so this is like a Spanish novella. Yeah, and it's I kind of love it. <laughs> it is the next pope going to be the gun pope? <laughs> gun pope. <laughs> Young pope and gun pope. And I then there it. is a Perry Mason remake coming up uh, that I'm also interested in with Matthew Rise playing the Perry Mason. Okay. And these are all HBO series in 2020. I was scared of Perry Mason as a kid. He was very imposing. Why? Why, would, why were you scared of Perry Mason? I just Mason? didn't like him. He had these weird, like, he had these, like, Frankenstein eyes. I didn't like his, I didn't like the Did you like his, Ironsides? No, man. It kind of creeped me out. Like, he didn't do anything scary. He just looked imposing. Like, like no, I wasn't a fan. Mm-mm. And do you, and there's, like, Dick Wolf was coming out with a FBI. Well, he already did. Sorry. Never mind. Right. So, Ooh. my last two things. Uh... I'm looking forward to the Cimmerillion for Amazon Prime. Ooh, yes, I forgot. I hope that's good. I just really, really do. I hope that's good. On that one, man. Yeah, and of course, my entire body is just tense, and I mean tense for the next year about news of the Wheel of Time. Oh, you be? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> like, oh my God, I've winter. Like, how many? How many times have you read the series? <laughs> Wow, I, I just realized I've been deep. I've only read the series once. I didn't realize you could read books multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> just throw the book away. <laughs> okay, so let me put this in done. perspective. I've read the series book to book twice, and I've oh. listened to the audiobooks thrice. I need to listen to the audio. I need to listen to audio. Come on, audible.com. Sponsor yeah. Master of the Nerdiverse Cast. I need, to, I need to be a warden. Is that what they're called? Or, uh, no, no, the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, <laughs> checking will ruin you're very close. Us. They're, uh, what are they? Warder, oh, you're off by one letter. I would never have gotten that. <laughs> That's how I, long it's been. Taishar Manethrin, anyway. Oh, I, my goodness, <laughs> <laughs> I can go on for days, the day. Sedai. <laughs> or stuff like is that, is I that, Sedai. What's that? It is I Sedai. <laughs> you're talking the reason why i don't know how to pronounce any of these things is i was a i was a lone reader the guy the only other guy i knew who read them didn't like me so <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's sad. Or like we we would just talk about like aren't the books kind of funny how they like push you to the edge and then they go nope not this book and then go to the buy the next one negative edging <laughs> yeah. okay so I, I, I okay so there's a cast list already winter you need to look it up Okay, because it is looking pretty solid right now. I'll buy the audiobook because I have no idea. I've heard of the story, but I've never. Mike, please tell us when you do because it is a classic fantasy series. It's not for everyone. Granted, if you don't like the series, it's fine. That's that's a generally accepted okay thing to do. But there is so many cool, cool things about this series. It's similar to I have no mouth, but I must scream. No, no, not at all. Okay, just want to make sure. All right, guys. This is classic fantasy. This is high fantasy. Yes, from an ex-Vietnam vet, I believe. It sounds like you have to be high to enjoy this fantasy. No, but you, if you were, you would get a weird, weird insight to it, yeah. I bet. Beautiful, beautiful. So let's bring this Star Wars cast to a close. Screen wipe. Where can we find you, Austin? Oh, Jesus. Um, you can find me at Austin Ozzy on Twitch, on Twitter, sometimes on Instagram, but don't really count that as likely. Um, likely. Yeah, I do D and D with these chuckos, these chuckos of buckos these sometimes. Ch- so, bucks. so, so keep that eye on the lookout for. Um, I've been helping a fr- I've been helping a friend actually make a compendium of homebrew D and D content, so that might be up on Reddit sometime soon. So, ooh. look for it. Um. Besides that, not much else. I am a regular person, so I have a job. I am a human. <laughs> I, do. I have, I have flesh and blood in my bones. I, have I swear, I am not no longer no alien. 
Please do not deport me. He's doing another. He's doing another voice. This one's risky. He's doing it. Uh oh, guys, we have to flag on the play. No, we're gonna have to remove Apu. ICE cannot find me. Oh no, okay. You can find me. You can find me on Trash Monk the Third, Trash Monk III on Instagram, Trash Monk Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Facebook and Twitter. I'm doing all sorts of things. I'm not responsible for what these guys do. So do not message me. Message him. Message. Uh, I mean, I have, I've called you out on Twitter multiple times. And I do not respond in kind. You I do. Go, you do, actually, sir. Do not lie. <laughs> I just go, what Don't are you talking me. about? Que pasa? <laughs> what? Good God. Yeah, if you I'm like just to... I'm just a simple man. I'm just a poor... with a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, <laughs> uh, possible TikTok in the future. We'll see that. TikTok, oh, the party don't start till we walk in. If you like this wacky content, support <laughs> us on Patreon. Like and... Shut up. Uh, you can support us on Patreon. Forward slash M O T N. Catch it is next level. I think she drank her own urine in her show back in the. It's. It's sterile, and I like the taste. Um, I would lick her. Okay, let's hurry this episode up. (laughs) Okay, before I just close, you know, it's complimentary for me to close this episode out to, like, Star Wars music, but I will close this out to catch a dinosaur in a hot second. No, no, I'll close it out. (laughs) Star Wars, those beautiful Star Wars. I'm excited. I am so excited. (laughs) And we will always ask you. Bill's here. To take that one step. It puts the hose on. <laughs> ah, what the heck ever Biffle Bill said. God dang it. Beyond? <laughs> he's already getting... He's, he, damn he's it! Been, you've been wed for how many months and you're already getting the old husband memory loss fatigue. <laughs> Shush. Thank you.